So I want to tell you guys a story about when I was coming out of my office in Jefferson Town, Kentucky, which is a suburb of Louisville, Kentucky. How's it going, everyone? This is Christian Duke. You're watching Everything Else Channel on YouTube, everythingelsechannel.com. Guys, this is a brand new channel, and I really want to get to a thousand subs so we can monetize and so we can put out all the features. So please subscribe. It's so important and ring the bell for notifications. I know everything else channel has got everything. So you're going to see politics, First Amendment audits, Daryl Brooks stuff, sensational stuff, boring stuff, all stuff, it's everything. But I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Also, smash that like button if you like the video and leave comments down below. The best way to get me to make a video is to leave a comment. I won't just answer you if it's a really good comment, I'll do a video. So what I wanted to tell you about kind of deals with First Amendment audits, but it also kind of deals with just being a person here in the United States. Now, before anybody, before anybody gets the wrong idea, I love living here, okay? I don't want to live in North Korea. I don't want to live in Saudi Arabia. I don't want to live anywhere but here. If I was able to pick, right, if the Lord Almighty came down and he said, you can pick and live wherever you want, language barriers be gone, you can learn that language better than the people that created it, right? I would say right here, the United States is the greatest country in the world. It's the best. That's my personal opinion. I love where I live. If you live in Den Denmark, if you live in Denmark or Nepal and you think your country is the best, great. I think this is the best country. However, uh, we live in a country where, and I love law enforcement. So if you don't like law enforcement, this is not the channel for you. Okay. That does not mean that I will not criticize, criticize uh, bad law enforcement. That does not mean that a couple of bad apples can't ruin the bunch at times. Um, and so I'm going to talk about not a bad apple necessarily, but a situation that I was in where, so my office building, where my private office is not my nine to five office, which is downtown Louisville, where I work for a great firm, but my private office in Jefferson Town, Kentucky is in a cul-de-sac of offices. Uh, there are four, three or four story uh, office buildings. My office is on the ground floor, which is fancy for the basement, but like ha it's, it, half of it's underground and half of it's not. My window, I see the grass and I love it because in the winter, when it's freezing, I'm the warmest. And in the summer, when it's the hottest, I'm the coolest. So it's perfect. Right. And so, you know, it was, I don't know. It was like, uh, I think it was like 11 o'clock. And, and this is before we had housekeeping. Now we've got housekeeping, or I guess you would call it, uh, cleaning or whatever. We didn't have it then. And my office was a little dirty. So I had this big garbage bag and I just put all the junk I didn't want in there. Most of it was just like papers and just junk. And so, uh, I was, I was taking it out of the office and a police officer came in and uh, it was a Jefferson town police officer. And I didn't even know that where my office was at was Jefferson town for the longest. I thought it was Middletown or St. Matthews. It was like, you know, a bunch of cities, a butt on that, uh, that, uh, area there, Hurstbourne and Shelbyville road. And uh, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm throwing trash away. There's my offices in here. And we have this big um, iron grate door, like a thick, thick door, probably could take like a 50 cal. And it was open because I had the key and you could see the lights were on in, in the ground floor from my office. And he's like, you know, um, we've had a lot of issues with that car over there. I said, that car? And he's like, yeah, that car has been coming around the homes of a lot of police officers. And it's just been really, really like bad for us. And I'm like, uh, that car never moves. That car's always parked there. And he's like, well, what's your name? I'm like, why does it matter? And he's like, well, I don't know. We just had problems with that car right there. And it just made me feel a lot better if you just told me your name. I'm thinking to myself, okay, at the time, I worked three blocks away at this really big building at another law office. I'm a lawyer, you know? And uh, he's like, you know, I just want to know your name. And so he's like, do you have any IT? And I was like, well, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm throwing trash out from my office. You can see, I can show you my office if you want. I don't want to give you my ID. And this guy's a sergeant. 
And so you know that when you're dealing with a sergeant, you can't do the, I need your supervisor, because that is a supervisor. And um, it, it really, really bothered me. It really bothered me because I was in a situation where I didn't want to get arrested. And here's the thing, you know, if, if it's a false arrest, you figure that out in court. You know, even an unlawful command, you follow it. I mean, that's just my personal, like, way of doing it. You know, you, you sort out the legal issues in court, not with the officer ever. Because most of the time, and no disrespect to police officers, but they don't know the law half the time. They're, imagine that they're enforcing something that they don't even know, you know? They don't, and I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend any law enforcement out there, but they just don't. And, um, you know, so I gave him my license. He ran it and he gave it back. And he said, thank you very much. And I said, you know, what you just did is you violated my fourth amendment. I don't know if you're aware of that, but I, I you know, I have uh, a right to, you know, my papers and my person. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't violate, you know, my papers or my person. You can't go into my house. You can't go into my office. You can't go into my car without, first of all, reasonable suspicion that, that, that you're in danger, but even more importantly, without probable cause. I mean, you, you, you just literally asked me for my driver's license because you saw me leaving my office building, which I've at, been at for, at the time, three years. And I've been there five years with a garbage bag. And then you made up this cockamamie story about this uh, gray SUV uh, driving by police officers' homes. That SUV hasn't moved in the three years I've been here. And now that I've been there five years, it's still parked there. So I was livid. So after the uh, sergeant left, uh, he thought I was following him. I wasn't. I went to the Jefferson Town Police Department to file a complaint. And um, you wanna hear something crazy about the Jefferson Town Police Department? They don't have an internal affairs division. There's like a hundred plus police officers. They don't have an internal affairs department. And I also messaged uh, the mayor and various members of the city council. The mayor wrote me back, but no one from the city council did. And the mayor just wrote me back to say that he'd look into it. And then when I replied, he didn't reply again. And just that week, they had essentially battered somebody. I think it might've been an elected official actually at a gas station within their city limits. And that official was actually going to sue the police department. And I don't know whatever came of that. But the reality of the matter is, is that if you're gonna do First Amendment audits, if you're gonna do anything, they're gonna ask you for your ID. And I think that in the future, I'm not going to give it. But hey, even me, a lawyer, I gave it. Now, I don't know if you would have arrested me or not, but I didn't wanna find out. But you see, so you have to you have to be willing to risk getting arrested when you say no. A lot of states are not ID states, so they you know they they like literally have to suspect you of committing a crime to get your ID. And you know, in hindsight, you know, coming out of an office building at eleven o'clock at night with a large you know garbage bag, um, I get it. But you know, he could have asked me to look in the garbage bag, but he really didn't even have the right to do that. You know what I mean? But plus, the door was open. And I pointed to him to my car and I told him that he could come in the office. I would show him that it was my office. It's, it's, it's just something like where, but I didn't have to do that. And he didn't have to make up the story about the gray SUV either. Cause that was a total lie. It was a ruse for why he was in there. Now I've never seen Jefferson town police again in my parking lot ever again, because I created such a stink. I mean, I came close to suing their police department because I was that annoyed, outraged, that my Fourth Amendment rights were completely trampled on, completely trampled on. And it was a sergeant. Don't always assume that because somebody's got stripes on their arms or a bar or two or, you know, a cluster, they could be a major, a colonel, or they could just be a, a rookie cop. You know, unfortunately, rank, the higher you move up in rank doesn't mean the more knowledge of the law that you have. I mean, I've seen audits where the chief of police will come out and try to trespass somebody from completely public property. I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd. And then you've got police officers that don't want to identify. You've got police officers that, that just are just downright nasty. Like I said, this is not an anti-police channel at all. 
but it's not like a you know a blue line channel either. I mean, I'm just I'm I'm being honest. Like whenever I'm in trouble, I call the cops, and they've always been really good to me when I need them. But there have been some bad apples, like that sergeant from the Jefferson Town Police Department, who was basically driving around, doing his job because a big part of policing is to you know, anything out of the ordinary, you have to investigate it. And I was out of the ordinary, you know, 11 o'clock, coming out of an office building with a garbage bag. I get it. You investigate. You don't make up a story about a gray SUV, you know, driving in front of police officers' houses when that SUV has never moved in three years and it hasn't moved in the two years after. So it hasn't moved in five years. I actually think it belongs to the maintenance man, if, if you absolutely must know. Plus, you know, it's all on camera. And I told him, look, this is my office. It's suite 104. That door is open. Here's the key to open that door. And here's the key to open my office. And my office is actually open right now because I just taped a bunch of videos and my LED lights on. And I can show you my business cards. I can show you my law degree. I can show you my, my bar card license. But why do you have to see my driver's license? Because he wanted to run my name. And, and, and so it's... Um, it's just very upsetting. It's very upsetting. So if you plan on doing First Amendment audits, uh, or if you just plan on living in the greatest country in the world, you may get stopped by a police officer that thinks that you got to show him your ID or that he or she can run your plates like they did with the uh, prosecutor in Tallahassee, Florida, the first African-American prosecutor in Tallahassee, Florida. And she was incredulous at why they had run her plate when she did absolutely nothing wrong. And that could happen to you. But the thing is, you know, if you find yourself in a situation where you're going to get arrested unless you show your ID, show your ID and then sue the department or file a complaint or do whatever you need to do. Uh, because even if you get an unlawful command, you know what I mean? Or if they try to violate your Fourth Amendment and search your car, even if you say no, you make sure the body cam, the dash cams are on, that sort of thing. Maybe you record it. The point of the matter is don't argue with them if you're coming close to getting arrested if you want to hold your ground and you're okay with getting cuffed up, you're okay with getting processed, maybe spending the night in jail, fine. I mean, you'll have an even better lawsuit against them if it's, you know, a false arrest. But reality of the matter is, if you don't want to get arrested, comply with the unlawful commands and then take action. In the end, if they violate your Fourth Amendment rights, they violate your Fourth Amendment rights, whether or not they arrested you or not. Don't think that they have to arrest you in order to have violated your Fourth Amendment rights. They can violate your Fourth Amendment rights if you say, you know, I, I do not consent, but I am following your unlawful commands under duress. That's not consent. That's basically you following an unlawful directive because you don't want to get arrested or beaten up or God knows what, because I'm telling you, it happens. It happens. Look at Marvin Sanders from the Dearborn Police Department. He beat up a cyclist who had done absolutely nothing wrong except for ask for directions. And after the officer gave him directions, he went to a white castle and asked them just to make sure that the officer was right. Because what if he was wrong? He doesn't want to bike 10 miles in the wrong direction. The officer walks into white castle, throws him a beating, leaves him injured for life, leaves him with PTSD. The government drops the charges. They were trumped up charges to begin with. And he sued the city and won $9.8 million. But yet, we can't find a single picture of Marvin Sanders anywhere. And he got promoted to detective since then. The media buried the story. The police department promoted him. The city paid nearly $10 million. And here I am making a video about it. So again, if you don't understand that some people are above the law, understand it. But the beauty of it is it all gets sorted out in court, more or less. So it's up to you, but if you're going to do audits, expect to have your ID requested. And Amy Ganson Press, my favorite of all, Nasty Nathaniel, Furry Potato, you know, Watching the Watchmen, uh, Desert Community Watch, News Now Houston, News Now Austin, uh, Angry Gay Pope. I mean, I think that they all have, uh, or I don't know, I don't know if they have or not, but I would imagine that they would, under duress, give their license you know, at, at times, instead of getting arrested under duress and putting it point blank that it is an unlawful command. And after doing so, probably slapping the city or the department with a lawsuit and probably 
winning something out of it. $10,000, $20,000, whatever it is, a lot of times the way the city rationalizes it is we don't want to engage in this lawsuit. It's easier for us to pay it. Well, I mean, you know, uh, I don't pay unless I'm wrong. And so whether they want to just write it off or they just want to say, oh, this is just easier. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they paid for the officer's mistake. So you don't necessarily have to get arrested, have your car impounded, do the perp walk just to prove that your Fourth Amendment rights were violated. Now, I didn't sue the city of Jefferson Town because it, it just, you know, it just is what it is. It just is what it is. But I was outraged. I was outraged that they violated my Fourth Amendment rights. And um, I mean, and it was clearly trash. It wasn't a TV in there. There wasn't a VCR, not that they use those anymore. Uh, there wasn't a car in my garbage bag. It was clearly trash. You could hear the cans in there. It was trash. Um, but he was just being a jerk. And he's a sergeant. And we were the only two people in the parking lot at 11 o'clock at night. And he knew that I was a lawyer. See, that's the other thing. I told him I was a lawyer. I told him I work at that big building. And this is my private office. I'm a lawyer. And so because I'm a lawyer, or if you're a law student, a med student, a college student wanting to go to professional school, they might actually walk that uh, or, or violate your laws that much more because they know that you've got a lot to lose if you get arrested because you want to protect your record, right? So just be careful what you tell them too. Again, most of them are great, honestly. Now, it's not lip service. Most of them are great but a few bad apples ruin the bunch.